Welcome. This is Levin Nock with DLC, and um, we're here today to talk about selecting appropriate network lighting controls. So thank you for tuning in. We'll start with a brief introduction to the DLC and to how network lighting controls are getting easier than they used to be. The main part of this webinar will show you how to use the new online network lighting controls qualified products list to choose appropriate NLC systems for each of your projects. My name is Levin Nock. I will present the webinar today, and my colleague Gabe Arnold will monitor the question window. Since we have a large group today and a lot to cover, participants will be on mute. If you have any questions, please write them in the question box. For timely questions that are relevant to the whole group, Gabe might interrupt. Also, written answers will be available afterwards along with a recording of the webinar. First, a few words about the DLC or Design Lights Consortium. Here at the DLC, we bring together energy efficiency rebate programs and lighting manufacturers from across the USA and Canada to set the standard for efficiency in commercial lighting. We have 76 utility member programs. The DLC solid state lighting requirements apply to rebates at more than 10 million commercial and industrial electric accounts. DLC members spent more than $1.8 billion on commercial industrial efficiency rebates in 2018, um, and, um, and typically more than half of that total goes to lighting. The DLC is mainly known for the solid state lighting list that was launched in 2010 of commercial industrial LED luminaires, lamps, and retrofit kits that qualify for utility rebates. The SSL list now has over 500,000 products and averages 1,000 website hits per day. Today, I'll be talking about the NLC or Network Lighting Controls list that launched in 2016 and is a bit smaller than its solid state lighting cousin. And just this year, we launched a new list of horticultural lighting products for indoor farming. This map shows the states where the majority of commercial industrial electric accounts are served by efficiency programs that require DLC listing for solid state lighting rebates. The rebate programs from NLC for NLC are not quite as widespread yet, but new programs continue to launch and expand. You can find a list of efficiency incentive and rebate programs on the designlights.org website by choosing resources in the upper right hand corner and then choosing network lighting controls efficiency member incentive program summaries. A nice short catchy title. That will take you to an Excel spreadsheet of utility programs. It's currently sorted by regions in column B but you can also sort by other columns, such as the utility name in column A or the state or province in column C. I'm using the term network lighting controls to apply to control systems that use all of the strategies shown here to provide the right light at the right time without wasting energy on light that nobody needs. These are the eight fundamental capabilities supported by all of the NLC systems that meet the DLC's requirements. Some systems also support a wide variety of other control functions such as personal control and demand response. In addition to supporting utility incentives and rebates, the DLC's goal with the NLC list is to bring some order to the wild west of lighting controls by providing product selection information to contractors and specifiers so that you can choose the best system for each project. Recent developments in the network lighting controls market are making NLCs easier. Many vendors have added new technology to make it easier to specify, install, commission, and use these products. You're probably familiar with some of these recent developments. First, more and more luminaires are available with integrated sensors and controls installed in the factory and sometimes even pre-programmed in the factory. Some utilities have rebate programs centered around these luminar level lighting controls or LLLC. Second, wireless controllers make retrofits easier because a contractor can add new network control to an existing space without running any new control wires. 
And finally, apps and browser software are getting better, both to configure the system for startup and also to operate the system. For some of the newer products, the complex tasks of installing and commissioning a control system are being replaced by new automated, pre-configured, pre-installed methods. In addition to those innovations that make installations easier, new metering microchips are getting installed in all kinds of components, in sensors, controllers, and drivers. This means that a lighting control system can easily report the actual energy use from the lights without adding any expensive and temporary data loggers. For a large project that needs a custom energy incentive from the local utility, this can make things a lot simpler to measure the actual energy use of the lighting system. I am pleased to report that the new online network lighting controls qualified products list is now publicly available thanks to the work of several folks who have contributed to this new software launch. And now I'll show you how to use the new online QPL to find an appropriate NLC system for each of your projects. By the way, if you are using multiple computer monitors or a large monitor with space for multiple windows, you might want to open a browser window and follow along by making your own selections at designlights.org. I've taken screenshots for most of this presentation, but you should be able to reproduce a similar view in your own browser window. Just a note of caution, some of the filter updates may take a few seconds to update. So, we'll dive in. At designlights.org, choose lighting controls in the top bar, and then under lighting controls in the left menu, choose search the QPL. I'll wait a second in case people are still opening their browser window. So you can see I'm kind of working my way down from the top here. First we go to designlights.org, then we choose lighting controls, then in the lighting controls menu we choose search the QPL, and now we're going to click the green button that says search the QPL. When the NLC QPL first comes up, it's in tile view, showing lots of details about each system. We'll come back to the tile view later, but for now, I'll choose display as list in the upper right hand corner to see a list of all the systems in list view. This is list view. You can filter the list using the filters on the left, and you can also sort the list by clicking the up down arrow toggle on one of the columns. For instance, I clicked on the little yellow arrow in the company column. So now the systems are sorted alphabetically by company. I also suggest changing the results per page in the upper left corner, change it from 10 to 50. So then you can see all the systems by simply scrolling down in one window. We'll change the default on that soon, but it didn't quite get done in time for the initial release. The database has lots and lots of information about each system, so it can be difficult to decide what to focus on. We have endeavored to put the most important information in the filters on the left, so that you can narrow down the list quickly to the subset of systems that make sense for your particular project. Here are the filters in the left-hand gray menu. I'm going to skip over the manufacturer filter for now and come back to it later. I want to focus first on this filter called ease of implementation. Actually, I apologize, that's a typo. It will soon be corrected to say ease of implementation. In any case, this filter addresses the question, how much expertise is needed by the people who install and start up the system? For the choices, at the top is an installation contractor with less than one day of training. Here's a larger view of the menu showing the choices. You can choose either one checkbox or multiple ones if you want to uh, open up the options to more possibilities. And um, when I ran this, uh, when I checked each checkbox yesterday, 
this is the number of results that I got. So some systems only checked one checkbox and some of them have multiple. And then there's a few that have a non-standard information about the in installation. Um, so out of the total, this gives you some sense of the distribution of how our 47 systems are distrib distributed at the moment. Um, but any of the answers to these filters will change every few weeks as we get new products and new um, information about existing products. So next, at the top of the filter menu, there's a clear all filters button. So I'm going to be using that sum after we've used a filter to make sure that all the filters are empty before applying the next one. So um, to understand how a filter works, it works best to clear the other filters. But then once you're actually picking your product, you can set uh, multiple filters and narrow down the list. So we have a couple of issues about which filters return mutually exclusive results, which we'll be fixing in the very near future. That applies to system scope and application, which is shown here. It also applies to advanced capabilities and user interface, which I'll come to next. So if the results of these filters do not seem to be quite like what you expect at the moment, please bear with us, they'll be fixed shortly. So as you can see for in, uh, scope, in system scope and application, we've got four options for interior systems and four options for exterior systems. And structured parking shows up in both places because it's covered by both kinds of systems. There are some interior systems which also cover structured parking, and there are some streetlight exterior systems that will also cover structured parking. So that's why that's listed twice. For advanced capabilities, most of these uh, possibilities return 25 or more systems. You can see there's energy monitoring, integration with API, integration with shading systems, BACnet, etc. Um, the one exception is cybersecurity certification. That only returns three systems at the moment, although additional systems may show up soon as we receive new information for the database. In the user interface filter, suppose you're interested in color changing and tuning. If you check the color changing tuning box here, then you get 18 results in the list. Um, I can pause for a second if anybody wants to try that. Just try the color changing tuning box. And it may take the database a few seconds to update, but um, you should be getting 18 results in the list. If you want to learn more about the color changing capabilities of those 18 systems beyond just yes or no, you can add a column about color tuning to the list with the Customize Columns menu and sort by that column. To show you that, first, you choose uh, Customize Columns is this button towards the upper right corner to see a drop down menu of possibilities. So I just pushed this customize column button and now I'm seeing this drop down menu. Each orange box that's selected corresponds to a column in the list. So you can see company is, is selected. So we have a company column. Brand is selected. We have a brand column. System is selected. So we have a system column and on. So I can unselect any of these and I'll, I can also select any of these other columns if I want to. So I'm going to unselect brand to make some more room. So I can still see the company and the system. And I'm going to also select color tuning. And after doing that, I will get a new color tuning column. And so uh, you can see here, I selected the color changing tuning filter. Um, so after I've, I've made that checkbox, it shows up here to let me know that that checkbox is set. It shows up in the filter menu on the left. And I got 18 results. And here's a list of the 18 results. And here's my column of color tuning. And I clicked this arrow to sort it. So now this color tuning column is sorted um, by what the contents of this cell. 
And so that can give you a quick overview of, of which systems do what with color tuning. There's also a filter called integral controls, such as LLLC. Um, the, the main selection here is for the LLLC option, which uh, many utilities offer an incentive specifically for LLLC when each luminaire has a controller and also an occupancy sensor and a photo sensor and control persistence. Um, and then it qualifies for the LLLC incentive. There are also some systems that offer control in every luminaire or lamp without necessarily embedding a sensor in every um, in every single device. Um, so that can be useful, especially for uh, smart lamp replacements uh, that are able to be controlled as a uh, uh, retrofit kit or lamp, but they may not have space for the sensors. So there's that LC option is a way to find that kind of product. The wired or wireless communication option filter has three options. Um, some systems are wired, and that is often used in new construction when all the walls and ceilings are open and it's easy to string wires. Um, it may also be used for high security areas where people are concerned about wireless signals. Um, the next option is wireless, which is often used in lighting retrofits, specifically because you do not have to string many wires. And then third is power over Ethernet. So this is wired, but there's only one single wire that carries the power plus the communication. And so we now have uh, several products in each of these categories on the list. And there's the uh, menu again. So so now I'll talk about the manufacturer filter. Uh, so for each, some people have a particular relation uh, with a certain manufacturer or a few manufacturers. And so if you know you're going to be working with one particular manufacturer, you can just choose them um, in this filter, and then you'll only see their products. And then you can learn more about their products with the rest of the website, but uh, you already know which manufacturer you're looking for. Or you can choose a few if you know um, that those are the main people bidding on a particular project. In this case, I click the checkbox for Acuity and for Eaton. And so you can see I got uh, the four products from Acuity that are currently listed, plus I also got the, the product from Eaton, which is listed. And so to do that, uh, first I opened the filter, and in my menu I typed Acuity, and then I selected the Acuity brands, I clicked this checkbox. So um, if you're following along, this may take you a minute to open that filter, type in Acuity, and then click that checkbox, and then click the X. So when you're done with a filter, uh, you click the X to get rid of the menu. Then that'll update. And then after that's updated, you can come back to this filter and type in Eaton, and then, uh, you'll get the choice for Eaton here, and you click that checkbox, and then you close the filter again, and after you've done both of those things, then you will get that view here, where you can see that the filter shows both Acuity and Eaton, and it shows all the products that are either um, by Acuity or Eaton. Um, so this uh, menu is a little funny, so I wanted to mention this to you. As soon as you type in a letter, you get all the results that have this letter. So you can see I started to type Acuity, but as soon as I typed the letter A, I got all of these options. And then as I continued spelling, I got fewer and fewer options. Likewise, if I typed the letter L, I get lots and lots of options because all of these possibilities include the letter L. And then as I type more, this list will get shorter. So if you're using this filter and um, you wonder why the menu is jumping around so much, that's why. It's adapting to each letter that you type on. Um, so 
in customized columns, that menu has a wide variety of uh, possibilities that I'm not going to go into now, but one that's particularly useful is the network number of edge devices. So that can help you sort a system which only supports a, a few devices from a system that supports many devices. Um, incidentally, uh, this parameter is, is also going to get changed out a little bit. The, the one that's actually more appropriate is the number of edge devices per on-site user interface. So the, the main question that most people care about is, if I have one building, how many devices can I have on the whole network for that building versus um, do I have independent networks where I can only address uh, one floor or, or one zone with one user interface and then the other areas are completely independent. So um, in any case, that was the network number of edge devices and we'll come back to that in a bit when I show you a um, uh, example of how to use this. Another uh, customized columns option is case studies in North America. So um, you can, in this case, I didn't apply any filters, so I've got all 47 results. And then I added the column for case studies in North America, and I uh, got these, and then I sorted. So all the blanks for the case studies are at the bottom, and any field that has, a, um, that has something useful in it is shown here at the top. So I could look through these and see, um, look at the case studies for the different systems. And here is another way uh, to use the filters and the columns in combination. So here, uh, first I filtered in advanced capability for integration with BACnet systems. Um, I'll pause again for a second if you want to clear your filters and then uh, open the advanced capabilities and choose the integration with BACnet systems. And then that will come back to you soon with 37 results. And then you can go over to customize column and you can see we've got uh, four different options for details about uh, building management systems. And so I picked them all four. And so now I'm going to have four columns about BMS. Um, however, they're off on the side of the screen. So I can, I can collapse this filter menu in uh, this little hide filter results that's circled here. So then I can get more space on my screen in my window. So as you can see, I have minimized the filter menu on the left, um, this little arrow is still circled in case I wanted to blow it back up, but right now it's minimized. And so now I have lots of space on my window for all four columns about the BMS. And then depending on what exactly I want to know about BMS, I can um, look, at, uh, look at any of this information. I can also choose this show button, which over, is over on the right, and that will take me to the tile view which we'll get to um, shortly, the tile view will show me even more information about this particular system or any particular system that I want to click show on. That'll give me the tile for that system. Let me pause for a second to check with Gabe. Is there any burning questions that uh, we should um, work on before moving on? Nothing so far, Levin. Okay, um, thanks. So continuing, here's, um, here are two examples of scenarios where you might use these filters and the customized columns to um, narrow down the list of 47 products into a few products that are particularly worthy of your consideration. We'll do a room level system and then also an interior enterprise portfolio system, where, which is a campus of multiple buildings. So first, um, I selected the filters for room level for system scope. I chose interior room or zone. And then for advanced capabilities, 
I chose number one. It's got to be really easy for a contractor with less than a day's training um, to set everything up. I also chose LLLC because that's going to make things easier for that contractor. And, and it might get me a better incentive. And I also, in customized columns, I displayed the network number of edge devices and sorted on it. So um, with those particular criterion, here are my choices. And you can see that if I know I really only care about this room, then any of these systems would work. But if, on the other hand, if I know this room is part of a building and I might someday want to control the whole building, then I might want to consider one of these systems with more devices. And if it's a really large building, then, then this would be my main option in terms of meeting all those criterion, but also being expandable. So, oh, so there, I was just uh, blowing up the filter results to make that easier to see. So we, the ease of installation, sorry, it doesn't tell you what its setting is, but I can tell you it's set on number one at the moment. And system scope is interior room or zone. Integral controls is LLLC. And then I just, I sorted on the network, um, network number of devices. And, and I got six products. So that was one example. Now we'll go to the second example, which would be a portfolio. So in that case, let's say, uh, the system scope is I want to control all the interior lighting across the whole portfolio at, of the whole enterprise. And what's really important to me on this particular campus, it's a university campus. They're doing lots of research on cloud computing, and they really care about APIs. So in advanced capabilities, I only want to see systems that have integration with an API. For the user interface, again, they're doing research. Uh, they're into color tuning, so it's got to be able to manage color tuning. And um, again, uh, I we happen to be in a region that has a better incentive for LLLC, so let's try that too. And then over in customized columns, I picked all the API columns to display all the information about API. So you remember earlier, I had uh, four columns for BMS. So now I've got four columns all about APIs, or at least as much as we've collected so far about APIs. And you can see these are the five systems uh, that would support an enterprise level with details about APIs. And if I wanna know even more, again, I would click one of these show buttons to get to the tile view. So those are kind of two extremes. Um, there are also projects in the middle where it just depends on what the end user cares about most. You can choose that from the filter and find the systems that work best for those particular needs of a particular project. And here again, the filter is uh, blown up just to emphasize that we've got the interior portfolio enterprise under system scope for advanced capabilities we've got integration with the API for the user interface we've got color changing and tuning and for integral controls such as LLLC we've got LLLC and then we added the API columns so now we get to tile view which I have uh, mentioned a few times this is the tile view so um, this button up in the upper right corner is a toggle. When you're in tile view, it asks you if you want to display as a list. And then if I punch this, I would go back to list view and then it would ask me, do you want to display as a tile? So I, I, we were in list view and then I punched that button and now we're in tile view. And so the tile view has six different tabs the first one is a summary of all of the um, categories that are in these other tabs. So we, we endeavored to, um, to organize these logically, but it's, it's a bit of a judgment call. 
So if, you, if you're interested in one of these topics in the summary, and you're not quite sure which tab to go look at it under, you can just click the view details, and that will take you to the appropriate tab. So that's an easy way to move forward from this, um, from this summary into the other tabs. There's also uh, a, a bit of summary information at the top of this tile view that always displays no matter which tile you're looking at. So here is the network tile. Um, this is even more information about networks than what you can get from the customized columns. And it also includes a few other topics, uh, control persistence and also LLLC. The next tab is connectivity. This asks um, how can you uh, connect to a BMS or to an API, and what data can you report? Uh, in a route, also, can you connect to a demand response system? Basically, can, can you connect to anything, and can you report anything? So this is kind of a long window. Um, oh, also, I should mention, for any particular product, if, um, if we don't have any data about a function, then uh, that's not included here. So for instance, if this system did not offer the demand response function, then this whole area would just be blank and it would, the window would stop at the end of energy monitoring and you would not see anything else. So some of the simple systems, which don't have many bells and whistles, uh, the tile views are quite short. Next, we have the tile view of saving energy. Um, these are the basic capabilities that are required by all systems. Uh, occupancy sensing, daylight harvesting, and high-end trim. And we have a few details about each of those um, each of those functions beyond just uh, that they have it, a, a little bit more about uh, how it works. Uh, next is, is called control. It's kind of like user interface. Um, so Continuous dimming is a way um, for details about continuous dimming. Uh, we asked, how is a continuous dimming controlled? Um, can the system control a plug load? How is the scheduling controlled? And what is offered for personal control? And, and by the way, um, the way DLC has been using this word personal control, it means um, a single occupant's ability to, to control their own space, um, for instance, in a large open office. Now, we might be changing that in the future to line up more with building codes, but that's how we're using it at the moment. And then finally, additional capabilities um, include such things as remote diagnostics and emergency lighting documentation. I believe that color tuning and um, Cybersecurity are also in here. Um, by the way, emergency lighting documentation is a uh, particularly important consideration in choosing a lighting control system. So one of the big questions after you've installed the system is how do you deal, well, while you're installing the system and setting it up, is how do you deal with emergency lights? Some manufacturers are really good at, at providing clear instructions for exactly how to set up the whole control system to handle the emergency lights. Um, and so we want to um, acknowledge them and provide links um, when, when people have provided these instructions with a wiring diagram so that you'll know exactly how to deal with the emergency lights. So that's what that's about. It's, it, this question is not, can the system support emergency lighting? It's, does the system have good documentation so that you can actually make the system support emergency lighting easily? And um, that is all I had for, uh, the for the overview of screenshots. And so I think I will go ahead and dive in and see what I can do about a live demo. Um, I've been a little hesitant about this because I'm not sure how fast it's gonna go running the webinar and also 
running the um, website, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm at designlights.org. This is the main page when I, I get to designlights.org. And so I'm going to choose lighting controls, and then I'm gonna choose search the QPL and click. I did a left click on search the QPL, and you can see down in the left-hand corner, it's waiting for designlights.org. And there we are. We're in the tile view that we were talking about. Um, ah, one thing I forgot to take a screenshot of. When you're in the tile view, you can sort by. Um, you can sort by manufacturers or by case studies at the moment. Um, some of these things are open to revisions as we find out more of, of what users would like. Uh, we'll probably be adjusting some of these things, but at the moment, let's go ahead and assort by manufacturer. Um, and so now we can see that Acuity is at the top, and um, we have this tile view of um, starting with X point. Um, we're displaying, oh, so we're displaying 10 results per page. So let me change that to 50. And it's thinking for a moment. Ah, it, and now um, we can see, I could scroll all the way down to see any of the different systems if I wanted to. However, um, that's way too many systems to think about. So, um, we could choose here let's do let's do another system scope if i click this filter there let's do exterior roadway this is one of our um most restrictive categories but we have a few systems that do exterior roadways what do we get yeah we got five systems so uh now we've got this these tiles for these five systems, we can also go to display as a list. And let's see. Um, ah, so we're showing LLLC. Oh, so here we can see, look, two of these five actually qualify for LLLC um, for their exterior lighting. Um, let's see. Let's see if any of them have case studies. Any of them have color tuning? Um, and maybe, maybe cybersecurity, so somebody doesn't hack my highway lights. And then I'll get rid of brand to make some more space. And um, I will minimize the filter results. And then I can see, oh, so four of them have case studies, and two of them are LLLC, and one of them uh, offers me color changing. And then if I wanted to see more about it, I could select show, and then see the whole tile for that one system. Um, you can see the, the rest of the products are still in list view, but when I click show, um, this, this one, um, this one product got expanded. So then I can go through and look, I can find out all about the network. Um, so for instance, in an exterior system, the max distance between nodes is a thousand feet. And that sounds good because my uh, light poles may not be very close together. So that would be an important thing uh, to check for exterior lighting. And I can also see what kind of additional capabilities do we have? So we have a case study, we have the emergency lighting documentation, and we also have some remote diagnostics. And of course, remote diagnostics are really useful for roadway lighting so that you don't have to send a truck around just to find out what's going on. So, uh, I uh, let's see. So now I'll clear all the filters. Maybe I'll actually run through my example that I gave earlier. Um, the, so first, let's take a, a small room, and for ease of installation, we're going to choose, well, let's do it a little differently. Let's choose either one or number two. 
So we definitely want a local contractor with a little bit of training, but I'm going to open it up a little more and say we're also okay if that person needs to get on the phone with somebody at the factory and talk it through. At least they don't have to fly out. So we're going to look at those two options. And now for system scope, again, we're going to just look at the room and zone for that conference room. Um, let's see, then I click that one. And so, oh, so you can see before we had 18 systems. Now we're down to 16 systems for advanced capabilities. Um, oh, let's try integration with shading. Uh, my conference room has lots of daylighting, and so I want to be able to control the blinds. So let's see what happens when I filter for integration with shading. Oh, that was a big jump. Okay, so if I want a simple system that's relatively easy to install, and it's a room-based system, and I want to control the shades, I've got two options out of all of those possibilities. Um, so that really narrowed down the list for me, where I didn't have to spend a lot of time looking through lots of data. So now, let's see what else we might look. If I unselect that one, suppose, oh, suppose I want plug load control. It's only one room, but maybe there's a copier in it or something. And I really want to be able to control the plug load. When do I get that? Ah, now I got 11 systems. So again, it's a manageable number. You don't have to look through all 47 products to see which ones will work for your particular project. And now, um, suppose, again, I want LLLC. So it looks like from my LLLC list, I'm going to get some of these. I had 11 before, but if it's just, oh, I got three. That's not very many. So there are three that are LLLC, um, but if I don't need LLLC, then I've got more of a selection. Um, I think I will pause there and check again for questions. Uh, Levin, you are extremely clear. There are no questions. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, um, that's good to hear. It looks like people are still on the line. So, um, um, yeah, now is the time. If you want to type a question in the chat, um, I... I guess uh, we could even try if you want to raise your hand, if you have a question you want to um, talk about. It's looking like uh, we might not be getting any questions. Um, let me think about what else I could demonstrate. Oh. Maybe I'll show you this manufacturer menu. So, see, when you first open the menu, it looks nice and simple. And now, suppose I'm going to type something like D. Then it's going to make a big, long list for D. There we are. But now, if I say what I really wanted was digital lumens, then it only gives me the one um, result once I typed in more of a word. So now I'm going to select digital lumens. So that was that's what I was uh, telling you earlier about that menu bounces around a little bit. Levin, we've um, got one question, if yeah. you're ready to take okay. one. Okay. Uh, sure. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, explain what LLLC is. Uh, yes. So luminaire level lighting control... <laughs> Um, involves a, a couple of different things. In each luminaire, there is a uh, controller. Almost always it's a wireless controller, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so there's a, a controller in each luminaire which is telling the driver what to do. Um, and so typically that controller has a wireless antenna, and it's an individually addressable device. There are also at least two sensors. There's an occupancy sensor to um, check the occupancy right around that one luminaire. And there's also a photo sensor to check the light level right around that luminaire. And so with those two sensors, you can operate 
occupancy control, and also daylight harvesting. Now, in uh, DLC's definition of luminaire level lighting control, there's one more requirement, which is control persistence, which means that um, if you install these luminaires across a whole space and they're all connected and networked and talking to each other and um, functioning great, and then one of them drops off the network for some reason. Uh, we don't know why, it just dropped off. Um, control persistence means that it will still um, uh, perform a few basic energy saving measures, uh, including occupancy sensing and daylight harvesting. So in the middle of the night, when all the other lights are off, even if this light has dropped off the network, it's still going to be using its occupancy sensing and its daylight harvesting to uh, basically shut down and be dark when there's no light needed. Um, and um, some uh, programs, particularly in the Pacific Northwest, but also some of the other areas, have extra incentives for these LLLC projects. So uh, because they um, they expect the savings to be more persistent because of the control persistence, and they expect the uh, system to be easier to, easier to install because you don't have to choose where to put a sensor exactly, and you don't have to um, hook up the, you don't have to coordinate which sensors goes with which luminaires, which sensors go with which switches. You still need to uh, group the luminaires and assign them to wall switches if there are any. Uh, but it makes it it makes the simpler it makes the installation more straightforward and can be considerably simple simpler. And then I see there's another question. Um, how can you select a system based on a maximum number of ah oh, come on, Christian? Uh, Back maximum number of storage days for data. Okay, um, that would be a detail that we did not put in the filter, and I'm not sure it's even in the customized columns. Um, I think you would need to narrow down the systems that you might be interested in. Let me see if that's in the tile view. Um, let's see. Where did my tile view go? Oh, I got no results. I got to clear the filters. Um, we've got a lot of information about saving energy. Uh, I could see sensing, although that might be in connectivity. There. Okay, so energy monitoring is under connectivity. And the energy report format, meter method, smallest spatial resolution. Um, I don't think we have that answer. I am sorry to say. Um, I can put that on the list if that's a, a particularly interesting one. But it looks like at the moment, uh, well, we at least don't have it for this system. Um, there's a chance we might have the data for another system but I'm not sure offhand. It looks like we did, oh, oh, here we go. Duration that aggregated energy data is available. There we are. Okay, so you would need to go, so the answer, how can you select a system based on the maximum number of storage days for energy data? Um, you would go to the tile view and go to connectivity and energy monitoring, and then here you can see the duration that data is available. Um, so various systems have various answers to that question. Um, and I can make a note to possibly add that to the customized columns. I'm pretty sure it's not in there at the moment, but let me look to make sure. Um, oh, at the bottom of this customized columns, you can also scroll down and get an even longer list. So if right now for energy monitoring, we've got the method, and the data export method, but we do not have the data duration. Um, so that might be something to add. Thanks. Um, how often are the features updated for each NLC product? Well, so we update the technical requirements each year. 
and have a new set of questions where we add some questions and remove some questions. And then um, each uh, manufacturer has the option to update to answer all those new questions. Um, they have to update at least every two years. Um, so any data in this database is no more than two years old. Um, some manufacturers, if they upgrade a product or if they have new features, um, they, they want to answer the new questions and um, add their information to this selection tool so that um, people, specifiers and contractors using this tool can find their product more easily. And so then their information may be more recent. Um, every few weeks, as, as these applications come in with new information, every few weeks we update the database. And so um, that's kind of a long answer to that question of how often are the features updated. So th th something in the database is generally updated every few weeks. Um, and all of the data in the whole database is at least somewhere in the last two years. Okay, well, we're getting uh, near the end of time. It looks like um, open for another question or two if anybody has one. Um, if not, I can stay on for a few minutes if you have uh, questions after we're done. But it looks like we're about done. So thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. And um, uh, please uh, enjoy the new user interface and let us know if you have any suggestions for. Uh, data to include either in the filters or the customized columns or the tile view um, of anything that's particularly important to the work that you're doing. Thanks. And not seeing any other questions, I think I will go ahead and close the webinar. Thanks, everybody.